very, thanks very much. I appreciate the invitation to be here today. And I'm going to give you kind of an overview of issues and challenges on the upper McCullumy River and its watershed. So I'm not going to focus on the river alone. Um, you know, the upper McCullumy River is really important for people, fish, and wildlife, not only in the local counties that it flows through um, upstream of you, but also in the region and also in the East Bay. Okay. The watershed begins up in uh, Alpine County. The headwaters of the McCullumy River are just a ridge away from the headwaters of the Stanislaus River. The watershed itself is about 570 square miles, and the river flows through the McCullumy Wilderness and then down through uh, the foothills of Amador and Calaveras counties. And the western boundary of what's normally considered the upper McCullumy River watershed and the river is Party Reservoir, which is East Bay Mud's major storage facility on the McCullumy. There's a lot of public land in the watershed, especially from the 3,000 foot elevation up. And the McCullumy is extremely important as a hardworking river for water supply and hydropower generation. This is uh, an image of East Bay Muds Party Dam, which is built in 1929. It provides 90% of the water for 1.4 million residents of the East Bay. There's also a very extensive hydroelectric system on the upper McCullumy River, the PG&E Project 137 McCullumy River Project that provides power for more than 125,000 homes. And it includes two major dams that are on the, the river itself, plus others on tributaries, tunnels, and conveyances. River's very important in our communities for recreation for local people. We use it like a public park because we don't have a lot of large public parks in our little rural communities, so there are stretches of the river where people bring their families to picnic. And they're all, it's also important as a regional recreation resource. People come to the upper McCullumy River. They bring their kids up from Stockton to play in the river since y'all don't have a lot of McCullumy access. A lot of people come to kayak. And there is whitewater recreation on the upper river uh, ranging as you go downstream from expert at the higher elevations to the, the beginner levels down near uh, Highway 49. The watershed is also an important resource for uh, timber products even today. This is a fuel reduction project that was going on just a couple of months ago outside West Point. It's taking off a lot of small diameter timber. Uh, and the forest up there with ha a fire having been excluded for so many years are, are largely overgrown and that's an issue I'll talk about a little bit more. Upper McCullumy is also important for its special species habitat. Uh, special status species there include the Sierra Nevada yellow-legged frog that's illustrated here, foothill yellow-legged frog, goshawks, California spotted owls, will of fly catchers, pine martens, and a lot more. The river upstream of Party is also potential restoration habitat for uh, Chinook and salmon and steelhead that are stopped at Comanche at the hatchery now. And that's one of the things that our organization is interested in is eventually restoring the, the salmon and steelhead upstream of Party. As I mentioned earlier, these overstock forests are is a major issue. So watershed restoration is the focus of a lot of attention in the upper river, trying to thin this fire excluded forest, and also stream and meadow restoration on some of the um, streams and the larger meadows in the upper watershed that have been altered over the years. This was actually a dam removal project that came about as a result of the relicensing of PG&E's project in 2000. Uh, and the dam removal was largely due to Pete's work here. So it was the first modern removal of a PG&E dam in history. So we were pretty proud about that. Clear cutting is a major issue in the watershed. It's very controversial. People on our side of the world will tell you that it is uh, very environmentally harmful. The Sierra Pacific Industries that owns the private timberland in the watershed and carries out the clear cutting has a different story, but it's, it's definitely an area of conflict and concern in the upper watershed that really often doesn't get a lot of attention. So I wanted to just mention it to you. Another issue in the upper watershed that drives a lot of the management is the concern about uncharacteristic fire from the unnaturally dense forest. And you can see that kind of band of darker brown in the middle of the image there. That is what CAL FIRE considers very high fire risk area, and that's the mid-elevation forest. So I want you to take a look at this little circle. 
Now that is right over the town of Pine Grove on Highway 88, so I'm sure you all have been, many of you have driven right through there. This is a Google Earth map of the development around Pine Grove, and every one of those little light dots is a house out in the middle of the wildland. And so this risk of wildland urban interface fire is very real, and it is a great deal of concern. And it's also a concern of people who are trying to do planning in the watershed because there's land use planning going on that is going to probably perpetuate rural sprawl in the foothills as the foothill communities grow. So that raises some serious issues about maintaining water quality, which is important not only because this water provides a great deal of, uh, you know, value to the East Bay, but also obviously for fish and wildlife issues. So the water quality is considered high in most of the upper watershed, but the condition of the watershed is considered a, a threat to that water quality. Another area of uh, concern in the upper watershed is there's some conflict between folks like my organization who work for protection and restoration of the upper watershed and people who are interested in, in building more dams in the upper river. And this little illustration of the photo was down, taken down at East Bay Mud's office a few years ago when they were uh, proposing to build a larger party dam on the McCulmy, which they have now backed away from. And that's something we're very grateful for. So I want to talk a little bit about um, some of the efforts that are underway in the watershed. Some of these are collaborations, some of these are cooperations, some of it's competitive. And there's really a lot of activity in the watershed and attention to the Upper Macomb right now, and that's a, that's a good thing in many, many ways. So one of those is the uh, uh, adaptive management team that manages the hydroelectric project under the settlement agreement that was uh, neg negotiated with the project license back again in about 2000. And it's made up of federal agencies, state agencies, PG&E and NGOs, and they do a lot of work on the flow regime on the river. They design uh, monitoring studies. They have some discretion over the life of the license and how uh, the water, the blocks of water will be used over time. So that's a, that's a probably the longest running collaborative on the river. They make all their, cons their decisions based on consensus. There's another large collaborative that's gotten a lot of attention that we're a part of also called the Amador Calaveras Consensus Group, which is a community-based collaborative forest group that works for healthier forests and stronger communities and greater economic opportunity in Amador and Calaveras counties. And it's made up of state and federal agencies, local officials, Native American groups, environmental organizations, job training agencies, and forest contractors. And I just went to the, the most recent ACCG meeting yesterday, and we probably had 50 people in the room. I mean, people were kind of trailing out the door because it's getting so much attention. And one of the reasons it's gotten attention is it was just chosen, its project in the National Forest was just chosen as one of 10 in the nation for funding this year. And if the funding comes through over the next 10 years, there's going to be $16.6 .6 million in federal funds directed at the Stanislaus and El Dorado National Forest, plus partner match and forest service match and product value. So it'll end up being um, a total value of more than $43 million coming into our watershed over the next 10 years. So this is getting a lot of attention. It's going to create about 104 jobs, do a lot of work on fuel reduction, also work on meadow restoration, stream restoration, road obliteration, things like that. So another big program, the McCullough Environmental Benefits Project and a, and a related avoided cost study that's funded with two uh, NRCS CIG grants that involves some large environmental groups as well as people in the upper and the lower watershed looking at the ecosystem services that the river delivers and how to help provide investment for the landowners who manage land and provide those services. The avoided cost study is, is aimed at directly figuring out how, bene how what benefits accrue to East Bay Mud and PG&E and other water users from forest and restoration, watershed restoration activities. And the idea there is to try to attract investment from those beneficiaries for the restoration activities. Another effort that's underway is the Wild and Scenic River Campaign for 37 miles of the McCullough River. That's something that we work on a lot. And there are also local and interregional water planning efforts underway. 
community wildfire protection plans, which are being done in the upper watershed, and um, county general plan updates. And these have, you know, various promises and various pitfalls. The promise is that especially the collaborative groups are providing the opportunity to move beyond old conflicts and work together. The Project 137 team is an example of that. The ACCG is a great example of that, where people who have never worked before, together before are working together. And there's some progress being made along those lines. And as I said, there's a lot of attention on the watershed in part because of all the projects that are going on up there. At the same time, lack of integration among the projects is a challenge. I mean, there are people who work on the water resource planning who have no idea what's happening with the watershed restoration and vice versa. So one of the things that I like to pitch whenever there are people in the room that work on issues like that is we really need our own little McCulmy River Summit one day where we put everybody in the room who's doing a project on the river, upper watershed, lower watershed, and talk about what we're doing. And then the thing that is really, I think, the biggest pitfall for us right now is places where power politics are still in play, the prospects aren't as promising. And I would say that includes our county general plan updates in Amador and Calaveras County, which are made more complicated these days by the presence of the Tea Parties, which, which are pushing that any kind of town-based land use planning is a, is a UN plot. It's a really interesting political <laughs> twist that I don't think anybody could foresee four years ago. And some of, the, some of the water planning, I think, is also kind of based on traditional power models. So that's not as promising, but it's getting better, I think. Wouldn't you say, Kevin? I think we're getting, we're making some real progress along the, the interregional water planning. So that's all I have for you. Thank you.